An OG Ghostbuster answers the call. Here's your look at the new Hasbro Ghostbusters Plasma Series Winston Zedmore. Executive offices are a long way from the firehouse, but you can still always count on Winston. Before we start looking at Winston Zedmore, the first thing I'd like to do is thank the folks over at Hasbro that provided the sample of all the new Plasma Series figures that we've been looking at over the last several videos. They are available right now in retail stores. They're also available right now online if you're looking to pick these ones up for yourself and to do some much needed size comparisons and comparisons of age. We can move over the slightly older, slightly fuller Winston Zedmore and bring in the original OG Winston Zedmore that we looked at from the first wave of Plasma Series. Now, they aren't using the exact same bodies, but I do think that they're probably using the same body as the original Ray Stans to give a slightly more portlier belly for Winston Zedmore. Other comparisons we can also make as well as bring in some of the more older Ghostbusters that we looked at from this wave, covering it with my hairy arm. There he is, Ray Stans, and there he is, Peter Venkman. Now, these three, of course, mm -mm and mm, all work well together because they've all got the darker color beige jumpsuits, where Winston Zedmore from the original wave, you can see, had a much lighter, paler looking jumpsuit by comparison. For the figure's accessories, half the lot are samesies. The other half the lot are newsies. Let's have a look at the newsies. First, starting first, newsies. What are we talking about here? First thing we're going to have a look at is the arm that comes included with Winston to complete at least the torso minus the head for the terror dog that we've been building all this time. Decent looking arm, still is a little limited when it comes to the articulation. You can only really move the hand back and forth and you can only move the shoulder back and forth, but at least we are making some considerable progress. Bringing in, not to scare anybody here, here's what we've started with with the terror dog, or at least where we've left things off. Put the arm in place, make sure everything's good to go, and we've got ourselves this as a terror dog so far. It's always going to have that permanent leaning forward look, but, you know, it's still nice looking sculpted figure. It's curious, I'm curious at least, why the lower half of it seems to be more that translucent purple plastic, where the top half seems to be more that familiar terror dog color scheme. But again, all I'm sure will be answered when Ghostbusters Afterlife finally hits the theater screens. Let's move this out of the way. Another newsie that comes included with Winston Zedmore, I'll promise I'm not going to keep calling it newsies, an artifact from the original Ghostbusters film is the one ad, the Ghostbusters for Hire. Says on here, do you believe in UFOs, astral projections, mental telepathy, ESP, clairvoyance, spirit photography, telekinetic movement, full trans mediums, the Loch Ness Monster, and the theory of Atlantis? Steady paycheck, apply now. This is scattered around other classifieds like free refrigerator and also ESP testing. What's rather interesting, though, is that they're all sort of nods to the original movie, like little Easter eggs. Like, for example, New York City Animal Shelter, Help Wanted. Cats and dogs living together need expert in interspecies domestication. Or mestication. Up the top, free refrigerator. Surprisingly spacious, fits much more than what you'd expect, not just food. Energy efficient, practically runs on magic, local pickup only. Love that, the fact that they would have included it. Now granted, it's all done here just on cardboard. It's less interesting on the back side than it is more interesting on the front side, but at least they throw in all these little fun kind of jokes to the original film, and I love to see that they did that. Put that to the side. Then we're going to get to the Samesies. Samesies, Winston Zenmore comes in clue with a proton pack. It seems no different of a proton pack than the ones that we've already got, gotten and had a look at so far. And it does still require the attachment of taking the hose because the neutrino wand is a separate piece inside the packaging. Take the hose and you got to fit it into that hole on the bottom. I've skipped over that step because I didn't want to eat up any more time. I know you guys have places to go, people to see, owls to hang out with. What? Owls to hang out with. The Proton Pack attaches to the back of Winston the very same way as all the other Ghostbuster figures we've looked at so far. All you have to do is detach this, and then take the figure, bring his arm out, like he wants to clothesline somebody, and then just take the figure and feed his arm straight through the one side, get the shoulder strap around his head, get that peg attached to the hole on the back of his torso, and then take the strap and feed it around, bring his arm up. Oh, it sounded like a tutorial here. 
and then attach this just to the side. Despite for the fact that he does have a slightly fuller looking stomach, actually he has the means to hold the proton pack on his back perfectly fine. Something to also go along with the figure as well, we can take the proton neutrino wand and we can just bring the fingers away from the palm. Luckily they're nice soft plastic. Take the handle portion of the neutrino wand and fit that in place. And then just bend the elbow. Why I'm doing this all, all the way, all by the way, I just want to show you what it looks like in his hand and also to play into the other accessory he comes included with. So we're going to take the other hand and again, we're just going to fit this around the end nozzle here. And there you got Winston Zedmore holding neutrino wand. But the reasoning why I did do that is that the other accessory he comes included with is the proton stream. The stream is no different than the other streams that we've looked at before, a center molded sort of pipe cleaner of plastic and in, in orange, and then the outer electricity here is a more softer blue plastic. Love these. If memory serves me correctly, and it doesn't always, I believe the original first wave of plasma series figures with the original Ghostbusters, Winston Zenmore may have been the only one to come packed along with the neutrino stream. Again, correct me if I'm wrong. The neat thing about it is what Winston Zedmore not only comes with it, but there's a couple of other figures from this wave that have also come included with neutrino streams, the proton streams. So you can easily use those either with the Ghostbusters from this wave, or you can backtrack it and you can use them with the original Ghostbusters because I don't think the original first wave, all of the Ghostbusters came included with proton streams. So again, problem solved. Let's go ahead and now take things off. We'll just remove this for the time being. We don't need to have them packing this just yet. We're going to go ahead and just fit this around. And by the way, I know I've already showed you this already, but there's a hole on the back of the neutrino wand, and there's a peg right there on the, on the proton pack. One of the difficult things when we initially looked at the Diamond Select version of Ghostbuster figures, it was a lot more difficult to take the neutrino wand and actually fit it onto the proton pack. You literally had to sit it like on a little ledge. This is a lot easier to just clip it into place. Once again, I'm going to bring in Winston Zedmore in, the original one that we looked at before, just to show you the difference between the two. There's a little bit more age happening here. There's a little bit more weight happening here as well. Is a little bit fuller in the stomach. One thing, though, I noticed about the new Ghostbuster figures is I do think I like the coloring of the jumpsuits a little bit more than the original ones. The original ones I felt were a little too light, not to mention the original Winston Zedmore that I got also had the error of Venkman patched on the front of his jumpsuit. Hearing from you, the viewing audience, that they had picked up also the Winston Zedmore, and it actually did say Zedmore across the front, I knew I had myself an error in hand. Now, I had the idea in the back of my mind of taking the head sculpt from the original Winston Zedmore and putting it onto the body of this one if you wanted to have the more darker beige color. Unfortunately, you can't. The problem is that the bulb joint that they're using for these heads are larger than the bulb joints that they used for these heads, so it's just not going to work, sadly. I guess you could kind of just have it balancing on top of the ball joint, but that would just be absolutely silly. But here's the difference, certainly, between the two. The outfits are very similar to one another. I'd be hard-pressed to really find some real notable differences, especially when it comes to the belts. The lower half of the legs seem to be identical to one another. It's really only just, again, the stomach seems a little bit more fuller on the new Winston Zedmore. It happens to really all of us when we get a little bit older in age. Head sculpt is pretty good as an older-looking Winston. It's kind of hard because, again, like the movie isn't out yet to really see if this is a true look to what he looks like in the film. I don't think it's as good of a head sculpt as, say, Peter Venkman. I think Peter Venkman was the better of the three older Ghostbusters that we've looked at so far. Ray Stance really was, I wasn't a fan of that head sculpt either. This Ray, this Winston, I should say, is, is okay. It's not bad. It does have the additional gray there on the side of his head to indicate that, yes, he's a little bit older. His face is, again, a little bit more fuller. I would say, if anything, I find like the features on the figure's face. Whoa, that's that's a lot of Fs. I do find the features, though, a little on the soft side, like the mustache, for example. A little, It could have been a little bit darker. Maybe it's the fact that the plastic that they're using is a little too shiny. That I find the features just aren't as sharp, say, for example, as the older Ghostbuster figures we looked at first. Now, this one accurately at least has Zedmore patched across the front of his jumpsuit, and he also does have the No Ghost logo there on the one shoulder. doesn't have it on the other, but that's the case on all of them as well. The figures, and let's just see if I can reach off to the side and grab the original Ray, just proving a point that I, I thought I was wanting to make. Yeah, 
it seems like they've used the same body for Ray's stance, the original Ray body, because his stomach, as you remember, was a little bit more fuller than the other Ghostbusters. It seems to be the case that they've used that same body for the older, more aged Ghostbusters. And that's fine. I don't mind the fact that they've used the same bodies, but definitely you can see there's a big jump in color from the lighter color scheme from the first wave of Ghostbusters to what we're getting with the newer wave of Ghostbusters here. Let's look at the articulation on an older Ernie Hudson. Head rotates all the way around. It goes up, it goes down, and you can also move it back and forth as well. For the shoulders, I know this is all things that we've already covered off in several reviews already. The arms rotate all the way around. You can bring them out 90 degrees. Swivel at the at the bicep, not the waist. I almost said that was a waist. At the bicep, you can double hinge on the elbow, and you can rotate the hands all the way around. Covering off, I know, all the same familiar territory. Upper torso is in a ball joint. Legs split out, forward and back on the legs. You can get a nice march going. Three quarters of the way up the thigh, there's a swivel cut in the thigh. There's a double hinge also in the knee. Again, really tight joints on the knees, but that's not a problem at all. I'd rather tight joints than super loose joints. And then for the feet, while there is no swivel cut here, this is again part to the lower leg. The feet, however, do move back and forth, and you can get a nice ankle pivot happening in them as well. This now finishes off all the original OG Ghostbusters, which again is a bit of a sad reminder that poor Hild Ramis couldn't be in the movie because the actor had, dis had been deceased many years prior. Get him to stand here. Here we go. And let's bring in the other original Ghostbusters. There's Ray's stance, and of course we can't overlook Peter Bankman. It is going to be definitely interesting. Let's just move these guys over a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. There we go. It's going to be interesting to see how they all come into this movie. Based on like kind of the read-ups that we have so far, they all sort of branched, it seemed, off after the second film and did their own respected career moves. And I guess at the end... I'm assuming it's probably going to be at the end of Ghostbusters Afterlife. I really hope it's not going to be like the last five, ten minutes that it's like, oh, hey, here's all the original Ghostbusters. But at some point, something is going to happen that's going to cause all the original Ghostbusters to come back together and join forces with the new Ghostbusters to bat, but battle, to bust whatever dark spirit we actually going to have in this movie that has something to do with a freestanding, hind leg walking sentinel terror dog. Again, we don't really know yet, but we will know soon enough. You ever wonder if Winston Zedmore, over the events of Ghostbusters 1 and Ghostbusters 2, while laying in bed at night, just thought to himself, I should have never circled that ad. I don't care what the pay was. It was just more hassle and problems than what it was worth. I should have instead just got that free fridge that was being offered at the top left-hand corner of the classified ads. Well done, by the way, Hasbro, including the classified ads with little nods, little jokes thrown in there from the original Ghostbusters film. I love the fact that they included it. Granted, it's just, yes, hard cardboard, but I'm going to hold on to that because it's a nice little accompanying accessory. And really, when you consider the fact that Winston Zedmore, if you exclude the classified ads, he doesn't really come with much of anything else. Proton Pack, Neutrino Wand, and the Proton Stream. All the standard fare that we've gotten with the Ghostbuster figures so far. Surprisingly enough, none of these figures have so far come in clue with Ghost Traps. Lucky comes in clue with that drone Ghost Trap that we see in the trailer, but that is seems to be the only time that any of these figures have come in clue with traps. Would have liked to see a couple more Ghost Traps thrown in there. Uh, Winston Zedmore, of course, a little bit older, a little fuller in there. And it's kind of, again, sad. I mean, you know, it's nice on one way, in one way, to, to see that the original cast is coming back for this movie. But on the under, other end of it, they're going to be older, slower. They're not going to be as able bought to be carrying around those heavy proton packs on their back. Because, you know, they're going to be doing numbers to their backs. And I can relate. No, not to carrying proton packs and busting ghosts, but certainly problems with backs as you get a little bit older in life. Nice looking figure, though. Again, it's a little sad to see Winston Zedmore older. You know, same with Ray Stance. Or eight, same with Peter Venkman. But at least we are getting brand new figures based on the Ghostbusters Afterlife. And again, a big thank you to the folks over at Hasbro that provided not only Winston Zedmore, but all the other Plasma Series figures that we've been looking at thus far. If you guys are interested in picking these ones up for yourself, they're available right now in retail stores and online. And if you are new to this channel and like the fact that we're looking at the new Plasma Series, why don't you hit this video, first of all, with a like. And if you'd like to stay on board and check out more future content, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and turn the bell notification on. And yes, we are going to be wrapping things up because the one last figure we have still yet to look at is Lucky, which will also finish off the Sentinel Terror Dog. And I'm not really sure whether I'm going to do the Sentinel Terror Dog as a separate review. I might just... 
I'm not sure. I might just keep it as part of Lucky's review. We'll, 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 we're not sure yet. Leave it with me. Leave it with me. Lots of stuff coming your way, guys. Coming your way, guys. So as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.